This is the Frank and Friends Show. Hi there, I'm Frank Murphy. And I'm Teresa Britton. Welcome, Teresa. Hi, Frank. Happy How are you? you? And you do qualify as a uh, friend of Frank because we've known each other a while. <laughs> yes, we have known each other for quite a while. <laughs> yes, and interviewed be together before uh, because you are the, the, I think it said um, Casa Grande, what is that, Big O Cheese? <laughs> Yes, the queso, big queso grande. <laughs> the big cheese. At Friends of Literacy. And that's a cause that I've supported over the years uh, for a number of reasons, mainly because I'm in the Hall of Fame, but, <laughs> but also because it's, a, I think, a fantastic, a fantastic event. The uh, East Tennessee Writers Hall of Fame yes. is coming up on March 24th. The Frank and Friends Show is a media sponsor of the Hall of Fame Gala, and I'm happy to do that because, as I mentioned, it's something I've been involved with and supported over the years through uh, various incarnations and jobs yes. that I've held. And you're an inductee in the Hall of Fame. That's right. You're I mean, a I remember. Lucky me. <laughs> <laughs> it's a beautiful trophy, though. <laughs> it's my favorite trophy. In fact, I have to tell you that you know I was put in for my thousands and thousands of blog entries. I made it into the social media category because uh -huh. I wrote a daily blog for ten years. So that would be, you know, thirty six hundred posts and so on. Yes. And I've kind of had the itch again. Plus, I've had a few people uh, try to light a fire on fire me to get me back to it. So I've got tens of thousands of words that are sitting there in a file, um, sort of a memoir, because I'm at the age where everybody I used to work with is writing their memoir. Okay. And I'm reading some of these memoirs. And I'm not calling you out, Mark Thompson of Mark and Brian. But I guess I am. But I mean, it's like interesting. It's like, oh yeah, we got John Travolta invited us to his house to jump in his pool. Like, okay, well, how do you think that happened? Right, yes. How, <laughs> who, who do you think set that up for you? <laughs> that doesn't just happen, right? <laughs> so I thought, well, maybe I could write that, you know, a little bit about that and how those pieces came together, how that, it didn't just magically show up. We didn't just, you know, it was, there was more to it than that. And all these other interesting things from radio and life. So I've been writing some of those, uh -huh. those behind the scenes anecdotes about mostly Los Angeles, but some about Washington DC and Knoxville too. Um, Very good. And of course you're a writer, so you have a file of words. Yes. Of many, many words. I, 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 I feel like I know all the words. And the ones I don't know, I, you can Google them and they're right there. <laughs> That's right. <laughs> they're all the words they're are all accessible. There. All the words on Google. So I'm enjoying it. I'm, I'm, it's, it's been fulfilling and I need to, um, but timing has been has been odd. You know, I mean, the podcast has been a little um, intermittent lately because I took a hiatus while we were filming, fil not filming, you know, we were um, recording to a hard drive, the Tennessee Scholars Bowl right. show on Which East Tennessee knows. PBS. Uh, yeah, so I finished my seventh season and I took on the added responsibility of helping to prepare the questions. So that was a lot more... In fact, my wife helped me. If I wouldn't for her, I couldn't have done it. Um, a lot more time consuming than uh -huh. I thought. So that the podcast took a back seat during that time. And then more recently, um, I, I do radio on this station called uh, 104.9 Lake FM. And they're like, hey, uh, one of our employees at one of the other cities uh, left on short notice. Do you mind filling in on 93.5 Lake George Radio? That's oh, Lake George, New York. Yes, are you familiar? I am. I go Look through the there. I go through there on my way to Burlington, Vermont, to visit my son. Well, that's exactly where you'd go. Yes, I do. Yes, we're talking about Glens Falls and yes. all the other areas up there at Lake George, New York. So um, it's kind of funny because, uh, in fact, as soon as we're done here, I got to go run over and do it. <laughs> to a show for New York um, and talk about ice castles and how great it is that they've got so much snow and how the temperatures are below freezing and isn't this wonderful and the winter carnival and the winter fest and uh, the ice bars and all the things that they have during the winter. Now it's really a summer resort. I mean yes. it's a beautiful lake. It's lovely. But they like it and it didn't happen this year when the lake freezes over uh -huh. because then you can go out there and ice skate and snowmobile and ATV and all the things on the ice. But it's not safe this year. The ice didn't freeze early enough, and nor did it okay. freeze thick enough. So they have to go around the long way. And people are, oh. So anyway, I gotta, that's what I've been doing. I've been doing two radio shows a day and um, all the other things. So the writing and trying to squeeze in the writing and the podcast. And anyway, thank you for being here. Yeah, that's what I'm trying to get life. to. <laughs> well, so do you. you I mean, you just were off making beads and, <laughs> and teaching bead making. Yes, at John C. Campbell Folk School in Western North Carolina. That sounds hard. 
It's a, no, it's fun. How, how it's did a, you go from being a bead maker to being a Friends of Literacy boss lady? So I was a, gla a full time glass bead maker for decades when my children were younger and I ended up doing marketing and development work for Foothills Craft Guild mm -hmm. here in Knoxville. Is and that one of those juried ones? Yes, that's one of the I juried think, ones. I think I've interviewed people about that. Yes. I'm positive so I have. How I, would I know? How else would I know? How it? else would you know? Yeah. So I did marketing and development for Foothills Craft Guild and also for Southern Highlands Craft Guild over in Asheville, North Carolina. Ah, yeah. And so I had grant writing experience and nonprofit um. experience. And when my children were older, I started as a volunteer at the Free Medical Clinic in Oak Ridge yeah. and then became their first paid executive director. And I was there for about six years and then came over to Friends of Literacy, a natural fit for me because I was an English major. Nice. Yes. Oh, and the mission of Friends of Literacy, I mean, I, I got involved before you were executive director when Melissa Nance was involved. Yes. And the mission of it just, it touches your heart because you'll go to one of these events, specifically the Writers Hall of Fame. Um, one of, and, I, and now you've, they used to do a thing that used to be a luncheon. Now, yes. it, now it's a, a nighttime gala and you've changed it, I think, for the better because you saw, I'm imagining, putting words and thoughts in your head, <laughs> that you saw what happened at the luncheon and you said, wait a minute, this part over here where the students get up and read their essays, it's just like an add-on, it's a tag to the Writers Hall of Fame ceremony, but that has value. Yes. So you spun that off to make it its own thing, right? Yes. How did that go? I mean, what, well, I'm, I, I'm, I'm conjecturing, that's what I think from the outside yes. it was, but what so, really happened? So I think part of it was, it's really hard for our students, our adult students, to stand up and read in front of other adults. Uh -huh. and, and, and these are people who literally have just become literate. Yes. You know, they have, they have, have learned to read through the classes at Friends of Literacy, or in some cases, they've gotten their high school equivalency diploma yes. by going to class at your place at no charge. Correct. And, and that's just a difficult, it's hard enough for adults who don't read or don't read well, it's hard enough for them to admit that mm -hmm. and take that first step of coming and saying, I need help reading. I need to learn to read. Um, You're and, also teaching English to some people who yes, don't speak English. Correct. Okay. And so to then ask those adults to stand up in front of a room. Yeah. And, of Hall of Fame writers. Uh, and read. It, it, that's just, it, it's difficult. Yeah. And it causes them a lot of stress and anxiety that they don't need. Yeah. So, so the Hall of Fame really has become more a celebration of writing in East Tennessee. So we induct the new members into the Writers Hall of Fame, but we also invite other Hall of Fame members who were inducted in previous years, we invite them to come back and read from their work or perform. Like Scott Miller, and, who was brought in a couple of years ago. Yes. Uh, it was the year Todd Steed hosted, in fact, because I was there to present the award to Scott Miller. Yes. And um, he's going to perform this year, and that's exciting because that it was is such exciting. a such a, a regular feature of Knoxville performing on New Year's Eve and all the things that he did. And then yes. when he finally, you know, his name of his band was Scott Miller and the Commonwealth. So when he moved back to the Commonwealth, <laughs> to the Commonwealth, yes, yeah, uh, uh, Virginia, um, it was natural for him. But he, you know, the rest of it's sort of like, oh man, what happened to that guy? He was here. Yeah, it was great. You know, yeah. back in the day, I mean, uh, the, Scott Miller was performing around town and yeah. so was Todd yes. with his various bands. And, and I think it's great. So Todd Steed is being inducted this year. And Scott Miller is performing, and R.B. Morris is performing, and so cool. it's like the guys are reuniting yeah, this that's year. That's very cool. And you have, um, last year you had several authors get up and read from their works. Yes. At, or, and in Sam Venable's case, you know, he's telling a funny story, and others it's more moving or it's a poem. Um, and that's uh, this year also. Yes. So this year, um, Alan Gratz, who was inducted last year for Young Adult Fiction, um, he's coming back across the mountain from Asheville to read. He's a Knoxville native, lives in Asheville now. So Because you have to either be associated with East Tennessee because you live here or because you write about here. Correct. Those are the yes. criteria? Yes. You right. have to live here now or have lived here in the past or write about East Tennessee. Yeah. That, that's how, how we choose. Yes. Okay. 
So Alan Grantz will be reading for us this year. Our um, local poet Linda Parsons, who is wonderful and and who, who I think of her as a playwright because she used to do stuff at Flying Anvil when that existed. Yes, and but she's also a poet and she does such a beautiful job of reading her work. Oh, nice. So she will be reading from her work this year, as will Michael Knight, who runs the he heads the creative writing program at UT and he is is a novelist and short story read, writer. Fantastic. So they will all be reading this year. Well, let's also run down who's getting um, induced. As I was Or indicted. Yeah. Yes. You, hear the, you hear Todd say that. Yeah, we were having some comedy about using all the other IND words just for the fun of it. But the other inductees in now the new class, the 2023 class of the East Tennessee Writers Hall of Fame to benefit Friends of Literacy. Yes. So let's see if I can run the list. Just read it. It's right okay. there. Okay. Do I get to read it? Hold it up. Oh, good. Yes. Look here. <laughs> there the we screen. go. There. There. <laughs> Teresa's cheat sheet. So um, we have Donna Doyle for poetry. Catherine Landis for fiction. Betsy Pickle is being inducted for journalism. We've already mentioned Todd Steed for songwriting. Steve Wildsmith for social media. Charlie Daniel for Lifetime Achievement, the longtime New Sentinel yes. cartoonist. Um, and Robert Cumming for Outstanding Contribution to East Tennessee Culture and Literacy. And do we still have to go with the story that Charlie Daniel retired from the New Sentinel? Well, theoretically, Because, yes. I mean, uh, he took the retirement package, but he was, you know... <laughs> I mean, he, so, uh, how about this? Charlie Daniel was retired. He was retired. From the new Sentinel yes. before he was ready. How about that? Yeah. I mean, the guy's 90 years old. <laughs> right? Right. Yeah. But, I mean, he's still, he can still draw cartoons. He's yeah. great. I love yes. him so much. We, he, he was very much involved in our front page follies every year because he would draw a cartoon honoring that year's journalism honoree. Right. And that became the cover of the program. It became everything. It became gotcha. the logo for that year. So I love Charlie. Yeah, he's great. He is awesome. The in fact, it came up in my Facebook or Google memories just last week or the week before when I went to his forced retirement party at his house. <laughs> forced retirement party. Or some of the guy's house. Some guy had a party and <laughs> to honor Charlie Daniel, and I, I got invited. <laughs> okay, okay. So um, we also have some posthumous inductees this year. That means they're dead. That means they're dead. So yes, um, we, we every year we try to kind of play catch up on the Hall of Fame and uh. induct folks who are no longer with us, but who deserve to be recognized. So this year's posthumous inductees, we have the Everly Brothers for songwriting. That's a big time for them. They got a park now They've in Bearden. A, yes. they, you know, they went to West High School, if you're wondering why uh, is Teresa choosing the Everly Brothers out of thin air? No, they're Knoxvillians. Yes. They went to the West yes, High School. Yes, they went to high school with a friend of mine. Oh. Um, Brandon Gibson, sadly, oh. last year, after we had decided on the slate of 2022 inductees. We had talked about Brandon and honoring him this year for playwriting. And sadly, um, he passed away. Yeah, he was a friend of mine. Yeah. And uh, I'm on the board of Marble City Opera, okay. of which he was yes. a managing director. In fact, it's his fault. It's Brandon's fault. He's the one who introduced me to Catherine Frady. So <laughs> if you've ever seen episodes, and there's, there's yes. dozens and dozens of episodes of this show where Catherine Frady is sitting over there, it's mm -hmm. Brandon Gibson's fault. It's his fault. Uh, 100%. It's his fault. 100 so, fault. So we are honoring Brandon posthumously for playwriting, for mm -hmm. his play, I Can't Breathe. Um, then we Which is really an opera, but it's also a play. Yes. I mean, right. It's yes. a musical. Right? Musical. Okay. So then um, we're inducting Duncan Mansfield, who was a writer for the New Sentinel. Oh. And then for TVA, we're in inducting him in for journalism. Vic Wheels, who wrote Last Train Out of Tremont. Um, and some other books about the Smokies. He will I'm be- I'm looking over your shoulder because I realized yes. just now that I have to learn how to pronounce all these names. Yes. Okay. So Vic will be um, inducted for journalism and then L.E. White for songwriting. Well, I have to read a blurb about each of them too? Yes, you will. I'll, okay. We'll write it for you. you I know. I I, well, I'm, I am see a lot of things. Yes. As you may be aware. And some of the gigs you'll get, and it's barely, they barely give you anything. You know, and I've gotten to the point where I'm, I'm fussy now. I say, I need three things. I need a, <laughs> I need a podium. I need a script and a bi notes or script in a binder. In a binder. And I need a mic stand. Yes. And obviously a microphone, you know, but a mic stand. Because that way, 
And you can you technically you can get by with two of them, but if I ask for all three, you know, because I and this happened one time when um, and I love the barbecue contest that I go and MC, but the I learned this the hard way. They gave me a bullhorn that you had to click to activate. Okay. And they gave me about twenty pages of Excel spreadsheet stapled. Oh my. And it was these are the winners in all the different barbecue categories, and it was actually what it was was the rankings of all the teams uh-huh. in every category, and I was trying to talk into the bullhorn and flip the page of the Excel spreadsheet oh, no. on legal paper, <laughs> stapled long and long way. And you're and, having to hold the bullhorn. Right. Yes. Okay. And, and the print is tiny. It was like 12, 11, 10, 11 font. Uh-huh. You know, uh, and I thought, you know, I can do better. They, they can do better. They we can, can do, do better. We can do better. We so, give you a script in large font. Yes. Three hole punched yes. in a binder. Yes. And on one side, I know it's a waste of paper, yes. but but that you need to do that side. too because you will lose your place. I found on two sided scripts, you'll lose your place very easily. Yes, um, we try to make it easy. You do. You find your job. Plus, I mean, the other thing about it being a friends of literacy event is it's very well written. The grammar is perfect, and I can just flow right through it. <laughs> yeah, it would be embarrassing <laughs> if we didn't do a good job of writing. <laughs> The other well, person one of the more challenging ones. Oh, I'm sorry. One of the more challenging ones is is, and I love beauty pageants. I love to try to help out the community. But you get these handwritten notes from the actual girls, and they're all written in first person. So on the fly, I have to. I can't. I'm not going to save it. You know, I love puppies because yeah. <laughs> no, <laughs> I may. I may. You might. But that's you know. She wants you to, and and little Mary Ellen wants you to know that she really loves puppies. But I have to do all that on the fly live yes. while I'm reading it. So that's why I like that's your script. That's a lot. Who else are we honoring? So the other person that we are honoring, um, ever, starting a couple of years ago, we began giving an Emerging Writer Award to a younger writer um, who shows promise and has... I think has, I sat at the Emerging Writers table last year. You may have. And yeah, she emerged during think, the dinner. I'm pretty yes, sure. Yes, Summer you know. Award was last year. Yeah, and then she went up and read. Yeah. Yes. So this year, our Emerging Writer Award winner is Ashley Latimer. She is a Knoxville native, a graduate of Bearden High School, and a frequent participant in the Knoxville Children's Theater now, Productions. Todd Steed is also from Bearden High School. Are we are we stacking the deck here? Oh, did uh, we <laughs> might well, that that is uh, possible. Got, I need to investigate that. You got the Everly Brothers the, from West High School. Yeah, at so least. we're kind of weighing it out. I think there. Uh, uh, Brandon. Oh, I, I should know I where he went. Know. I could Google it, but okay. All right. So anyway, so Ashley left Knoxville and went to New York City, and she ha- was awarded two Tony Awards for producing that's, Broadway plays. That's big she time. is a two-time Broadway Tony Award winner. How is she emerging? And now she's, been, like she's well that was for production. That was not for writing. What were the shows? But now, you know? oh I mean I, I, I wanna, I'll Google you, it. You Google it. If you go I'm, to etwriters.org, oh, yeah. it's on there. It's like once a on a time? No, that's not. Okay. Anyway, go oh, to... All right, that's anyway, easier than... You look than, that up. I already had that page um, pulled up anyway. But she came back to Knoxville during COVID and wrote a book oh. called Francis Discovers Possible. It is a beautiful, lovely, affirming children's book about a little girl named Frances. And if you have a child in your life, or even if you just like good children's books, you should check out Frances Discovers Possible because it is a lovely book. So the Tony Awards that she received are for a play called Once on This Island yes. and The Inheritance. There you go. How about that? Yes. Well, that's fancy. And aren't we lucky? So she lives in New York. Well, now she's living in Knoxville. Uh, she came back here during COVID. Oh, how about that? Okay. Wow. I know. How about that? All right, not lovely. So as we find out every year, Knoxville has such a treasure trove of excellent writers. You know, every year we think, oh gosh, this is the best slate of Hall of Fame oh, inductees see, I was thinking, ever. You think every ever. year you're like, we're done. This is it. No, we don't have any more. No, well, every year we think, oh my gosh, look at all these wonderful nominees for the Writers Hall of Fame. How can we possibly choose? There's so many talented writers. We have an abundance of riches and every year we struggle to decide who's going to be inducted that year. And then we think, gosh, it won't get any better than this. And then the next year, here we go. I'm aware of some people who have not gotten in. There are quite a few people. And every year we think of those people. Oh, 
I mean, I know they. <laughs> I know that applications have been filed. Yeah. Well, speaking of people who are in the the Hall of Fame, may I? You may. <coughs> mention um, John Jefferson, who was the co-author with Dr. Bill Bass of Death's Acre, a mm -hmm. nonfiction book, and the other nonfiction book, Beyond the Body Farm, plus all of the Jefferson Bass fiction. But I guess I can't mention that because he didn't get in for fiction. He got in for nonfiction. <laughs> <laughs> But you can mention it anyway. <laughs> uh, and uh, I am a big fan of John and, of course, of Dr. Bill Bass. Yes. And I do work for Dr. Bass as his MC and his facilitator. And I've interviewed him, you know, many uh, dozens of times over the years in all different formats mm -hmm. and videos and audios and every other thing. Um, in fact, I went at the Rose Glen Literary Festival. I, I delivered a presentation on one of the Jefferson Bass books, the oh. one called uh, The Devil's Bones we picked because it had cremation in it, and I, I, I know the cremation bit because I've taken the tour of right. the crematory. So if you want an autographed copy, you want to know more? Uh, if you want an autographed copy of uh, one of those books, or maybe you'd like the <laughs> paperweight that. skull, these come in silver gold, and I think um, the lifelike resin, which is a larger one, it's more like a real skull, and it looks like a real skull, Kind of. I mean, it's plastic. You can tell it's plastic, but it's resin. But from a distance, it'll it'll get people's attention. Except that Dr. Bass will have signed that also across the superorbital ridge or, you know, the cranial sutures or wherever. And maybe put your name on there. Uh, they went to his house last week to get him to sign new things. Uh -huh. So get your orders in at bonezones.com. Don't forget the S uh, for any of that merchandise. And where is it? The brand new, the latest addition to the collection is the long sleeve. Body Farm T-shirt. Would you help oh, me hold this up to make yeah, sure everybody realizes? Yeah, that's awesome. It's long sleeve, where it's got the the skull on the front, the Body Farm on the front, and on the back. And show the back. It's a list of all of the books that, that John and Doctor Bass did together, autographed, available at BoneZones.com. Excellent. There's a lot of different things. I mean, in addition to the hats, I think the hats are cool too. Here's a here's a oh black hat. There we go. Here's an orange hat, the Doctor Bill Bass groupie hat. Very nice. Um. I think, uh, well, I've got a, you know, a bunch of stuff down in there. I just like that you knew the parts of the skull. Oh, I've, I'm impressed. I've been working with him for a bit, you know. I think that's impressive. It's one of those things, that the um, if you ask Dr. Bass, if I could only give you one bone and you have to figure out who this person is, who the poor dead person is, what would you choose? I, and I'm, I, I think skulls are really informative, obviously. And he said, naturally, the pelvis. You would, the pelvis yeah. would be your first choice because the pelvis can tell you whether they're male or female and probably about how old they are. Okay. And that's where he would go first because the pelvis yeah. is uh, one of these bones that, it's actually called the innominate bone, the nameless bone, because okay. it fuses together during your lifetime. You know, uh, you're, as an adult, you have a pelvis that's almost like one piece, but they right. all, it's multiple pieces that come together. And that, those are clues into your age. Similarly, with the skull, you know, you're looking to see if the wisdom teeth have erupted um, and you're looking to see uh, the, the angle of the teeth tell you a lot about a person's heritage. The superorbital ridge is something that men have, but women don't. And also there's a bump on the back of the skull right here that I have that you don't because men have it. Okay. And it's, it's interesting. It's like right. Can you see that? Yeah. It's like right there. So, huh. if, you, so if you, you're married. Uh-huh. Well, go home and I'm going to go home, honey. And, let me feel your skull. Yeah, and say, hey, I, now that's the thing. Is that right now, uh, that, that because I'm, I'm so thinking about the superb ridge, I forgot the name. It's the occipital protuberance. I think that's what it's called. Occipital protuberance. I think that's right. Okay. Sounds right. Hey, honey, let me check out your protuberance. Yeah. <laughs> anyway. <laughs> okay. It's science. Interesting. It's, well, you know, so I was talking to so a anyway, high I school. The, oh, oh is it, you finished with Dr. Bass? Well, I was going to tell you about Dr. Bass. Oh, yes, please. Then I we was, still do that in the confines of the commercial. I was talking to a high school student just a few weeks ago, and she wants to go into forensics because of Dr. Bass, because she's in 12th grade, and she's read all of his books. Oh, that's fantastic. Yes, I think that's really cool. Well, when I was giving this speech at the Rose Glen Literary Festival, which is where I got this, uh, this nice little mug here, um, or vase jar, or whatever it is, the um, the front row. I'm up there talking about a, a Dr. Bass book. Okay, he's not there. I'm I'm right. giving the speech, and the front row. They've all got on the UT forensics shirts. Oh, and I'm like, so I kept saying to him, "How am I doing? <laughs> <laughs> am I being correct here?" Because like, yeah. <laughs> I was trying to talk about you know when you die in a fire, how your body goes into the pugilistic posture. 
because the uh, the muscles in the arms um, and the skin contract in, su in such a way that as you're burning, unfortunately, burning, you end up like this, wow. the pugilistic posture. Um, hmm. And then also the other thing that's interesting is when you're cremated and they open up the door, it's a recognizable skeleton. You know, you don't just turn to ashes. That's not how right. it works. That you're a charred skeleton and then they have to crush that up okay. to make the quote-unquote ashes. So that's what I was talking about. Huh. Anyway, bonezones.com. Don't forget the S. So that's um, the commercial. Excellent. So John made it in for his, uh, I mean, he was a science writer at Oak yes. Ridge for yes. many years before he um, uh, started working with Dr. Yes. Bass. And, and last, some of the other folks, how many of them still are active or still help out over the years? I mean, I know Karen Reynolds uh, was inducted for songwriting, right. and you told me that she's on the board now. Yeah, Marilyn Callett's still very involved, Sam Venable, Chris Woolwind, Edgar Miller. We have a lot of our Hall... Some of our best supporters and volunteers are Hall of Fame members. Oh, nice, nice. So we have quite a quite a nice community of support there. Yeah. Yeah. And the event is at the Foundry at World's Fair Park on Friday, March 24th. Yes. And thankfully, my wife reminded me that uh, to order the vegetarian meal because I it's I'd bad. forgotten that last year we ordered the vegetarian meal. It just it didn't even occur to me. So I was thinking about the chicken because you know, I sent in my order before Lent, right? Right. And she reminded me she caught that. And I think we had a, we must have had the vegetarian meal last year. You did, year. and you told me it was very good. Yes. So I, so I planned the same thing again this year I don't on your recommendation. Well, good. you said the vegetarian was very good last year. And, and I'm I not said, a vegetarian. And I said, okay, we're having the same thing this year. Good. I'm not a vegetarian by any stretch of the imagination, except for those six Fridays. Right. You know, where either I'm a pescatarian or a vegetarian, yes. depending on... Well, so let me tell you, we're having the same vegetarian entree thanks what to is you it? and Jerry. It's something so called Beyond remember. Beef. It's grilled Beyond Beef with a five grain pilaf and roasted vegetables. Okay. <laughs> yeah. I know because I've answered that question for many people this year. Anyway, well, same good. thing as last year. Thanks Outstanding. to you. Oh, fantastic. I'm excited about it. So, um, What's the agenda? And I know you've probably sent it to me in an email, but for the purposes of our show. Sure. What's so, the basic gist of what we're doing that night on okay. Friday the 24th? So the doors are going to open at 545. And Do we I have will, to be there at 545? Well, I would really like for you to be so we can have a quick run through okay. of how the program's going to flow. Because I, I wanted to watch Scholars Bowl on my phone up okay. until 558.30. Okay, you just be standing there <laughs> and watch it. You can watch it on your phone from the foundry. So the doors open at 545. We'll have cocktail hour from 545 until 645 when the dinner service will begin. Um, depending on how long it takes to get everyone served, the program will start between 7 and 715. Mm -hmm. um, and we will intersperse hearing from this year's inductees. The, it we, ends depending on how fast I read. It does. Yeah, it so really if does. If I read fast enough, we can get out of there yeah. early. Yeah. <laughs> so I think it's going to end about 9.15. Um, it's going to last, the program will last a couple of hours. Again, depending on how long, how fast you can read I, and how was, long other folks decide to talk. You know, how, <laughs> you know how the old expression is, they don't remember what you say, they remember how you made them feel? Yes. So the script last year, I don't remember what the script says, but I remember how it made me feel and i remember thinking there was part of it where i was saying oh this is good and i remember just i don't know it just it, it was so it, i know you wrote it and i'm complimenting yes. you for the way you wrote it but it was a joy to read it because of, i'm i'm now they all think i'm saying this they think i'm brilliant right because i'm saying it and right. I'm, I'm i'm not just reading it like uh, this i'm i'm delivering it i'm orating you know yes. and uh and, you do a great and the crowd was they were into it yeah there was this one i, I think it probably was the sad part or maybe it was the, I don't know. There was just something. There was some part where I really, I feel like they were just hanging on every word of that script. And I kept thinking to myself, I didn't write it, but it's good. Well, you do a really good job. And I have to say, so I have written the script myself for many years. I now have a board member who is a very good writer. Oh, you and, just put in an AI. <laughs> I can put in AI. Yeah, what's that new, there's a new program. Chat GPT. Yeah, yeah that, yes. Yeah. Yeah. So I'll just yeah. put it in that. But I have a, a board member who is a very good writer and who used to organize literary events at another university. And he's great. So he is helping with the writing oh, chores. Good. All right. That's a shout out to Alan May. 
All right, reference good. librarian at Knox County Public Library. <laughs> so, no, I mean, it's a, he's it's, great. It's a joy to get up there, and it's an easy, you know, it's an easy gig. Well, plus, you send me the script in advance, so I'll yes. read it and and be ready. Um, yeah, it's, and you do a great job. I mean, you well, really do. The reason you have me, I mean, anybody can get up there and read it, but you know, my as I as I say in some of these emceeing events, some of my favorite ones, I'm there really just for when things go off the <laughs> off the rails. <laughs> Well, because in my mind, there are no rails. You know, if, I think I've told you this analogy before. If you're an MC and you say, oh, this event's off the rails, well, then you've got the wrong image of the event in your right. mind. Because I'm picture that railroad bridge that goes across the Tennessee River. And if the show goes off the rails, we're all in the water. So my idea is, what if it's just me on a jet ski? And all I got to do is get across the river. And there's a couple of, you know, buoys in the river. And I got to hit those. Yeah, here's the sponsors. Here's this, and really the order doesn't particularly matter as long as I touch all the bases. As long as you touch as long all, as you get it's like covered. slalom skiing. Yeah, and, you, and we and I get us all across the river safely. We're all fine. We're all yes. You know, so it's a, that's part of my my view of it. But yeah, I'm there to smooth out any potential awkward moments, and that's why high school talent shows are. <laughs> Can I tell you another MC story yes, since we're on do, the topic? Do. I used to MC the high school talent show at the Tennessee Valley Fair okay. for a couple of years. They had someone who did it forever, and she uh, stepped, was done. She retired from it. And the lady who was in charge of it had a script, like you did, mm -hmm. and didn't know who to get to replace her. And the, my friend Sarah uh, Roberto said, Frank can do it. Get Frank to do it. And she didn't know me. The, the woman in charge didn't know me. Um, and was scared to death. Okay. That here's some clown, some radio DJ. So she came over to the radio station and gave me this script and met with me and said, "Now this is the script. You just you stick to the script." Okay. And I, yes, ma'am. I will yes, stick <laughs> to the script because I've done it all. I've done where there's no script and where it's a tight script. I'm like, it's. I, I was getting two hundred dollars. I'm like, oh yeah, I'll stick to the script. Well, we get there. And the kid who was the winner, I think he was playing the marimbas. Okay. The marimbas are a gigantic musical instrument. Right. And they have to get them up onto this temporary stage in the Pepsi tent at the Tennessee Valley Fair. And they have to get them back off the stage so that the dancers and the country singers can come out. Well, there's a problem. Something goes wrong and they can't move the marimbas. Oh. So, at this point, I'm like, well, I have two choices. I can stick to the script and collect two hundred dollars <laughs> and pass go, or I can say, "Well, I'll—they're never going to invite me back, but I am just going to be me. I am just going to cut loose and handle, talk, do whatever I would, what pops into my head as an improviser. I'm just going to do it." Okay. So that's what happened. And I smoothed over this awkwardness of the pro technical problems and all the other, and whatever else went wrong that year. You know, it's all little things. A bunch of high school kids all showing up with their, well, I've got a tape, or I've got an iPhone, or I've got to plug in my amp, or I've got to, you got to clear the table so I can do my dance. You know, it's, and it's all right there on the second. Right. So I BS my way through the whole event. And I think, well, that's it. That was a nice one-time gig. And she comes running up to me at the end. <gasps> Can you do it again next year? <laughs> so go. every year that she was in charge of it, then for okay. three, four years, I was the MC. And then once she finally retired, then the new person got their own, you know, host to do it. Okay. But yeah. I had fun. I had fun with that gig. Well, we have fun when you're at the Writers Hall. So if something goes wrong, good event. That's kind of what I'm waiting for. Yes. <laughs> I just worry about the the changing out of the equipment for the musicians who are going to perform. That's that, where it usually yeah, goes squappity. Yeah. Yeah. And if that's something where, you know, you can either have enough room on the stage that you can have both set up, and it's just a matter of transferring a. A chord, yes. or you know, something simple. Then well, we we worked it out. So, so Karen Reynolds, being a Hall of Fame member and a Friends of Literacy board member and a musician, mm -hmm. she has worked it out that the musicians are on one side of the stage. And oh, like the, last year, the readers are in the yeah, middle. Yeah, she did that last year when Sarah yeah. Perkle performed and she yes. performed, and it all went yes. fun. So good. They have a large stage at the Foundry, so yeah. it works well. It's a good room. I've emceed it the uh, Go Contemporary Dance Works Gala there multiple times, and obviously your thing. I I think we may fill the space this year. That's fantastic. We have already sold about 50 more tickets than we sold last year. And here you are promoting it on the fabulous Frank and Friends show. Exactly. I mean, that's so worth here we another go. We'll sell out after couple, today. Couple yes. <laughs> 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 well, 
<laughs> well, what, uh, we talked a little bit about the, the mission of Friends of Literacy, which is teaching people to read, teaching people to speak English, teaching people to get their high school equivalency. Is that the, those are the big three? Well, or am I missing so something? We, we have expanded. We used to only serve adults, but now we serve children as well because we've recognized that the best way to improve literacy in our community is to start by helping children learn So to similar read. to what Dolly does with the Imagination Library, you're putting books in the hands of children. Yes, so we provide tutoring for adults and for children. We put books in the hands and homes of low-income children, and we give parents the resources they need to become reading coaches for their children because we know that all the school-based interventions um, only are successful if there is also enrichment in the home. And family-based literacy practices are a key indicator of a child's reading ability. So lack of books in the home is the number one obstacle to children's reading success, mm -hmm. and parental yeah. involvement is the number one factor in children's academic success. Boom. So... Get the parents involved, give yeah. the kids books, and provide tutoring to well, adults. I mean, it makes sense. Children. I think I was, t I was telling Todd Steed that my dad was a writer, a journalist, mm -hmm. before being a public relations guy. My mother was a second grade teacher, so she used to tell about, talk about how she never got out of second grade. <laughs> <laughs> like that, yeah. <laughs> how many years she spent in second grade. <laughs> so we're even reaching out not just to school-age children, but we're starting some initiatives where we're reaching out to preschoolers and even younger because even before children actually start reading, they develop skills that are pre-literacy skills that help a, them become better readers when they get to that age. All right, so, what's an example of a pre-literacy so skill? So, language. So, okay. talking, building their vocabulary, um, talking children through activities. Mm -hmm. Like, okay, now we're going to go to the grocery store. So, to do that, yeah. we are going to first make a list of our groceries, okay. and then we're going to get in our car and we're gonna to drive to the yeah. store, and just sort of talking kids through those routine activities of the day. The more That's words a All child right. hears yeah. and is exposed to, the better their vocabulary. Well, that makes sense to me because uh, my daughter's got five kids and the third one is in preschool. Mm -hmm. And they're all like, how did this kid learn to read? And yeah. like, how did this kid learn to write? It's not that he did, it's just that his two older brothers who are in, first and third grades yes. are that much further along. So he's just copying them. And then I'm like, but he, he barely, he writes from right to left because he doesn't know. <laughs> he's teaching, yeah, he's taught himself, right. you know? Yes, yes. Well, and you know, part of it But I mean, is, when you look at it, it makes sense. He just writes the letters backwards. Well, it's interesting. So a friend of mine who's a reading specialist in Anderson County said she is amazed by the number of children who start kindergarten having never held a book. So it's they don't know. Well, they've just never been exposed to books. Oh, so they goodness. don't know how to hold a book. Oh. They don't understand how to turn the pages. They, they don't swipe the page. They don't know which direction <laughs> things, you know, they don't know which direction things are turned. I've seen uh, videos of that where the baby is trying to swipe the page. <laughs> <laughs> I fail with swapping on my new iPhone. I hope they do better than I do. <laughs> I'm, I'm a failure with swiping. Uh, well, Teresa, I appreciate your taking time Thank out you of your busy me. executive directoring uh, to this talk about great. Friends of Literacy, the mission overall, and specifically about the um, East Tennessee Writers Hall of Fame induction gala on Friday, the 24th of March. Hope you'll join us there before we sell out the tickets. Uh, you go to etwriters.org and you'll learn about this year's inductees. Yes. Uh, you can also see a picture of me when I was very skinny from <laughs> whatever year it was that I slid in under the wire. Slid in under the wire. <laughs> yeah, so. Now, uh, you'll yeah. probably hate this, but I'm gonna do uh, a commercial for two things. First of all, Audible, where you can listen to books, which I think helps. Audible is great. Listening to books is good. Okay, well, audibletrial.com slash show is the code, the URL where you'll go to get a free 30-day premium membership where you can experience all of the benefits of the premium membership for free for 30 days. And as a premium member, every month you get an MP3 credit, a credit for one download, which you can either uh, use as you earn them or you can bank them because some of the larger projects require two or three credits. Yeah. 
Well, I'm recommending during the free trial, take the credit, download the book, make sure you get that one right there in your first month. Pick the longest one you can find that is worth the credit uh, and get that audibletrial.com slash frankenfriends show. And it's sort of found time. I mean, you know, we'd love to all curl up and sit down with a book and have that tactile experience, but we can also read more on the go by listening in our car yes. as we drive, by listening um, as you jog, as you take a walk around the exactly. neighborhood. Like I need, it's the beginning of the time of year where I need to do a little more walking so I can be listening to things. Also, I've got, you know, the Amazon Echoes mm -hmm. and the, you know, the new, the app on the phone. It saves your spot. So you can listen across all these devices to, and if you need for 10 minutes, like just you're, you're driving back down to work today. Right. Is that going to be 10, 15 minute drive? Maybe 30. <laughs> well, <laughs> West Knoxville to East Knoxville. <laughs> okay. I didn't write, it was right. Your office moved from where I used to, and where I'm thinking. Um, so half an hour, you could listen to a couple of chapters exactly. probably. Right? So that's an awesome thing you can do uh, on all the different things. So check that out, audibletrial.com slash show. Also, I'll uh, highly recommend that you go to our website, frankandfriendsshow.com slash store, where you can get the merchandise similar to the mugs, the scenic mugs that I've got here. There you go. And some other drinkware. Um, of course, I you know, got that picture back there, but it is time. I believe spring is close spring enough that it is time to bring back the beach towel here it is, everybody. It's back for spring and summer. The Frank and Friends show beach towel. What a picture. Excellent. What a, and you know Jody Collins? Yes, I do. He comes to the thing. Okay. In fact, you know what's weird is I hired him to make this logo. Oh. And without meeting him. Without ever meeting okay. him in real life. You know where I met him? Where did you meet him? At the East Tennessee Writers Hall of Fame well, induction ceremony. Go. There you go. <laughs> well, he did a great job on your logo. I really yes, like it. Yes, it looks good. I yeah, think it looks and the good. beach towel's nice. Do you need a black, like a two color version of it, or you just need the? I sent you like the, the full, color four version. Color. Yeah, that's good. Because uh, that barbecue contest, that I need to send them the two color version okay. because uh, they put. <laughs> no, we like for the, the full for the back color. of the T-shirt. Okay, so please do uh, buy the merch, get the bucket hat, get the things. Uh, it helps support the cause here. You know, it costs money to turn on the lights and the batteries and, you know, all the business. Um, I'm hoping uh, Catherine Frady, my dear friend Catherine Frady, is supposed to be back from Baton Rouge uh, in March. Okay. So we've already, uh, we've already texted and she's committed to coming in to do a couple of episodes because I have this long list of podcast topics that I need to, uh, to fling. I wouldn't, you know, trouble you with them, but... <laughs> My time's so valuable. <laughs> it is. You know, but I have to tell Frady about how, you know, I had, there was, I was on a plane. We had an aborted landing uh, at, at, at McGee Tyson. I have to tell her about losing my, my iPads and, and how I lost money on a Visa gift card. All these things that just happen. Things constantly happen to me. And I've been so busy doing the Lake George, New York radio show and doing the East Tennessee, um, the Scholars Bowl on East Tennessee PBS. <sighs> Which, by the way, we're, we're getting down to the end. Yes. That's why the night of the gala, it'll be like the semifinals. I think the, uh, or the quarterfinals. Okay. The, the finals are happening on Wednesday, the 29th of March. Yes. So I'm very excited to find out who wins. And East Tennessee PBS is one of the sponsors of this year's East Tennessee Writers Hall of Fame. Um, they don't even know that I'm in it, I bet. Yes. So our presenting sponsor this year is Axel Logistics. And our other sponsors are LHP Capital. 21st Mortgage, Ponce Metals, KUB, KPMG, Knox News, John Becker Photography, Union Ave Books, and of course... The Frank and Friends Show. The Frank and Friends Show. Lovely. Well, good. Yay. Good company to be in. Yes. John Becker's pictures are fantastic. Oh, he's awesome. He does great photography. He was at another event that I attended, and I was like sidled up to him and go, Hey, John, I'm here. Can you do it? <laughs> yeah. <laughs> he did a nice photo of you and Jerry at he last did. year's event. That's, when I, that and that's why very I Very good. It. I've been in... I, somehow I got roped into being in a fashion show. This is where I first encountered John. Okay. Is that some the real estate, the women of real estate have a fashion show. Ah. And I'm like, okay. So I, I'm in my, actually I had to walk the red carpet, walk the, the runway in a tuxedo and do silly things. And John captured that perfect, <laughs> I'm like, oh man, this guy, he made me look good. That's, uh, I don't know how he did it, but he's a magician. He is awesome. So, and he's not the same John Becker who's on the news. No, he is not. Although I'll tell you, the reason I'm wearing shorts is kind of because, the, and the reason I, I've got this, I learned this trick from newsman John Becker is you, behind the desk you wear shorts and you don't tuck your shirt in so that right before you go on, you can do this. 
I love it. <laughs> and tip. I remember that. And know that at, on, Scholar, well, on Scholars Bowl, I wear long pants because it's we film it in the in the colder yes. went, uh, months. But uh, yeah, I, I do sometimes leave the shirt tucked out. So right before we start, I can go. All right, here we go. Okay. <laughs> Showtime. Um, and I'm joking about not knowing who won Scholars Bowl. It's just that I'm not going to tell you until you watch the episodes on. Scholars Bowl is awesome. I enjoy watching it. Have you watched it? Yes, I love it. Oh, good. You should write some questions or make a suggestion. You can write, say, oh, I mean, I can give you a plug. I think so. I could say um, one of the inductees, one of the dead people inducted into the East Tennessee Writers Hall of Fame in 2023 was uh, the Everly Brothers. You know, I don't, whatever. The answer will be the Everly Brothers or the yes. West, answer will be the West High School or the answer can be Bearden where they are Kingston Pike, you know, mm -hmm. and they've got a park in their honor on this major thoroughfare in Bearden. Yes. What is it? <laughs> blink, blink. <laughs> blink, blink. Who is that? I don't know. Yeah. There's any, we can, any, there's any number of things we can do. Thank you very much for uh, watching, sharing, uh, subscribing, especially. Help us get to 1,000 subscribers on YouTube and uh, ring that bell for notifications so that you don't miss an episode when I finally crank out more of them. Um, I have some plans also for the Seymour Smoky side of things, uh, including uh, an episode that we'll be filming very shortly at a major theme park. So, <laughs> you don't want to miss that Stay one. Tuned. Yes. <laughs> uh, it'll be a lot of fun to catch all of those on YouTube. Uh, this is the Frank and Friends Show. I'm Frank Murphy. And I'm Teresa Britton. And we'll talk to you again next time.